In this video, we will be going over some of the things most people are leaving out when converting a regular conventionally framed roof with roof rafters, ceiling joists, or rafter ties to a vaulted ceiling. And usually a vaulted ceiling will require the installation of a beam. And that beam is usually installed either underneath the ridge or you will remove the existing ridge and replace it with a beam. And the reason for the beam will be to prevent the walls from spreading out. In this example here, the rafter ties or the ceiling joist will prevent the walls from spreading out. However, once you remove them, you will need to reinforce it somehow. And that's usually going to be with a structural ridge beam. So without the ridge beam, all of the weight of the roof, rafters, ceiling joist, will be transferring down through the walls and down to the building foundation. So this will happen on both sides of the building if you have a situation like this. And hopefully that makes sense. Because the next thing I need to point out is that sometimes you're going to have a load-bearing door or window header. And this header is usually going to be designed to support the weight of the floor joist and might not be designed for a concentrated load. We will go over that here in a little bit. So this header here is supporting the weight of these floor joists here, along with some of the weight from the roof above. However, that could change if we need to modify the building somehow. And that's really what this video is all about, is the weight distribution that will be transferred through your new ridge beam or posts that will be supporting that ridge beam. So the foundation that we have for this design right here is going to look something like this. However, if we install a ridge beam, then we're going to need some footings to support the post and the structural loads from above. And again, this is what a lot of people aren't doing. So you can see here where we now have additional footings on each side of the opening. Because we've modified the building now, we have a post sitting on top of a beam that is now transferring additional weight from the roof above down to the building foundation. So don't just go ahead and install a new post over a 4x4 header. And you think I'm kidding, I've already seen plenty of the stuff I'm providing you with in this video. And I get it, a lot of people aren't interested in doing any additional work, especially if they think that the building's going to support it. And it might, don't get me wrong, so let's go ahead and install our new ridge beam. Our ridge beam is going to need to be supported by something. That something is usually going to be a post. And that post will need to support the load all the way down to the building foundation. So this is going to mean installing a post underneath the ridge beam, maybe a few more blocks if you only have one floor joist rim, and then another post under that, and then of course the additional concrete footing. So here's what I'm seeing every once in a while. Someone will come in and install a post over a second floor or a basement without installing a post underneath that or an additional concrete footing. And the information in this video can apply to a single story building also. Just get rid of the lower level floor. You're gonna need a footing underneath this most of the time. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at a post that might need additional floor framing support along with modifications to a header. And again, this is another problem I'm seeing every once in a while. People are just putting a support post right on top of the floor sheathing. They're not even installing additional floor joists underneath it. So you can see here, something like this is probably going to require a larger header over the opening, a floor joist beam, and that floor joist beam will need to be supported on this side somehow. The weight from all of this is going to need to be transferred down to the building foundation. It doesn't just stop at the floor sheathing. And I get it, you hired somebody that knows what they're doing and they're not going to go ahead and do it because it's going to require a lot more work. This job right here is what I would consider a major home remodeling project. And there's a good chance it's going to require building permits and a structural engineer. 
And of course, another situation you could run into would be installing a support post underneath the floor framing along with a concrete footing to support the ridge beam. And this is probably the most common thing I run into while watching other videos about somebody who's actually done the remodel. They've done it and they're telling you how to do it. And they're probably doing it for the same reasons I just mentioned. It's going to add additional costs to the project or the contractor doesn't want to go through the work of installing a new footing. That's a lot of work sometimes. So there you have it. A few more things to consider if you are going to convert an existing roof, whether it's built with trusses or conventionally framed components like rafters, ceiling joists, or rafter ties to a vaulted ceiling. So again, we have this situation here, this situation here, and this situation here. Three different situations that should be helpful to any do-it-yourselfers, contractors, architects, and even engineers who are just starting out in the business.